Hello everyone, my name is Candy, and today I will be sharing with you this presentation on the topic of taxonomies and theosauri. Full disclosure, I've been using these terms somewhat interchangeably for the last year or so. Considering these terms are housed within the subject of controlled vocabulary, it did seem unlikely to me that there would be two terms used where they only needed one. I knew I had to be oversimplifying things. This is why I was so happy to discover Heather Hedden's blog titled The Accidental Taxonomist. She does an incredible job of explaining these two terms, and she also clarifies when and how they become implemented into a controlled vocabulary design. It's important to understand how these vocabularies function because this allows you to manage your search strategies in such a way that you maximize the database's features, which in turn enhance your search results. So to get started, I would like to refer to Julia Marshall's essay titled Controlled Vocabulary, A Primer. She provides a useful summary of the early planning stages that occur before a controlled vocabulary design is created for a database. Marshall notes that the designer must ask the client several key questions that will help determine the type of controlled vocabulary that is needed. These questions usually fall into the following four categories. What is the material being searched? Who is doing the searching? How will the controlled vocabulary be implemented? And how will the controlled vocabulary be maintained? For our purposes here, the answer to these questions will determine whether a controlled vocabulary becomes a taxonomy or a theosaurus. A taxonomy is suitable if the terms can easily be arranged into a simple hierarchy if there is little need for associative relationships, and if the user tends to prefer browsing and link-following types of searches. A taxonomy is much simpler to create, and it's also easier to maintain. It works well for products and services. I think they use tent products as an example in our readings. Basically, you can search for a tent that is a one-person, a two-person, a three-person, etc. This is basically a simple top-down search where the items below directly relate to the top item in the hierarchy. On the other hand, she explains, a theosaurus is suitable if the terms are difficult to categorize into simple hierarchies. If there are associative relationships that are required, such as synonyms or preferred terms, and if the user tends to prefer searching with boxes and is willing to find and then use preferred terms to enhance their search. A theosaurus is best used for research literature, where one subject is likely to intersect with many other subjects within any given search. As an example, just to think back to the assignment where we were instructed to search the benefits of pet therapy on college students. These are two very different subjects being linked together for the purposes of research. Designing a well-crafted theosaurus is a considerable undertaking. However, there is no doubt that when used properly, a theosaurus can be an incredibly powerful search tool. This concludes my presentation on the definitions and the uses of taxonomies and theosauri. I hope I've helped to clarify any questions that you might have had regarding these terms. Thank you for watching and happy searching.